I'd like to welcome the great Harold Ford. Nice to see you, Harold. Nice to see you, sir. So last time we spoke, you were getting back into business. What are you doing with yourself? Started a company, started a firm out advising companies and uh, working with companies with mandates that I like, including uh, prescription drug companies or oh, people good. trying to find lower prices for seniors and others in the country. I'm working with a few technology companies on ways to deliver better education systems to particularly poor kids across the country, so exciting stuff. That's great. So, for my money, there was no better guy that knew the, the confluence between Wall Street and Washington and politics as you. I, obviously, you were in, in politics for many years, congressman from Tennessee, got into Wall Street. Um, I want to ask you about politics first. I'm going to ask right. you a little bit about Wall Street, what you see happening in Wall Street. Um, you're a Democrat. Uh, a lot of people would say moderate Democrat. What's happening with your party right now? Because they are, they are so far away from Harold Ford, even Barack Obama, forget about Bill Clinton, that we are now, it seems like the tail is wagging the dog, the left. Right. Um, what's going on? And, and by the way, I would like to ask you, do you think it's sustainable? Can it be Trump? So, it's a good question. I, I think that Trump is an answer to all of the things you just laid out. Bernie Sanders, had he won a nomination in 2016, there are those in my party, I was a Hillary Clinton supporter, who believe he would have been a more formidable opponent and likely oh. would have won because he was speaking to what Donald Trump was speaking to. The biggest thing tearing at our country today politically, the issue that is, is income inequality and the imbalance is there. And people will continue to react in ways in local politics, state politics, and national politics to select those people who are going to try to reverse those imbalances. Now, my party likes to spend money, at least that's what some of these proposals look like, Medicare for all. Green New I get Deal. what we're trying to do, the, the Green New Deal. A lot of the Green New Deal doesn't even address clean energy, it's addressing a whole array of economic uh, inequalities, which need to be addressed. But Democrats and Republicans have to remember, if we're going to invest public dollars in any initiative, the outcome has to be better than the condition it's trying to, right. trying to, trying to uh, prevent and trying to cure. And we're not doing enough of that now. Well, let's break it down a bit, though. Donald Trump sounds crazy, right? I read his Twitter feed. You do right. too. Um, he's he put him for he put forth pretty much conventional Republican or, or new well, Democrat policies, cutting taxes, less regulation, all that all the stuff Clinton did. Um, what they're proposing on the left is not conventional stuff. I mean, we are talking we are talking about socialism here. So. I think we're at a moment where we got to reimagine and reinvent capitalism. Capitalism is the greatest system in the world, but it doesn't work well or as well as it should for everyone. Donald Trump talked about trade in 2016 almost like a Democrat. He talked about health care and entitlement spending like right. a Democrat would. So he appealed to a lot of union workers and blue collar workers across the Midwest. The question for Democrats heading into 2020, the economy is going to be strong if it continues at the rate it is. And there may be inequalities, but the economy is moving in the right direction. And everyone running for re-election as president, if he has a strong economy, and hopefully one day we will say she, they generally win. I'm 48 years old. In my adult life, we've had more two-term presidents than one-term presidents. Right. Whereas before, they weren't, they, 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 the two-termer was unlikely. So we've got we to have an economic message, not just one that spends more, not just one that is unrealistic and is a, a pandering message but a more realistic one. Why not close this loophole as it relates to care and interest? Why not, if we want to provide college for everyone, say if you pursue a degree in STEM, science, technology, education, I mean, uh, engineering and math, the areas where we need right. those jobs, and you want to be a nurse, you want to be an engineer, uh, uh, we'll provide free tuition for you. If we're serious about health care, we've got to look at outcomes, encourage kids earlier in life, provide doctors and hospital visits for kids in elementary school and kindergarten. But not just give it to them free, but provide these opportunities so in the long term. Sounds great. But let me just back up one second. Sure. We talk about income inequality. Isn't that changing under Donald Trump? Isn't the fact, don't, don't we have a fact where wages are rising now? Construction, my dad was a construction worker back in the day. Uh, a lot of immigrants come to this country and become construction workers. It's a decent paying blue collar job. There are more of those now. I mean, how do you run on income inequality when there's less of it? Look, I hope we don't have to talk about this any longer, but if you look at the fact that a majority, a huge majority of American families couldn't withstand a $2,500 blow 
at the end of a month. Something's wrong, particularly okay. when you consider the kind of wealth that exists at the very top. I'm not one that says take from people, but I am one that says we got to give people a fair chance and even shot at going after uh, big opportunities so in life. I listened to my pal Anthony Scaramucci here today say that he believed that public education was the number one issue in America because without that, you, you limit people's He's opportunities right. to move forward. But the Democratic but, Party's against school choice, which, which basically is, is a way to make public education better while you're providing inner city kids with a decent education. It, it certainly is a part of the mix and both parties have a lot of blame that can rest at their doorsteps. I'm a school choice guy. I believe that when in, in any community in America where school's not working, show me tools, give me tools, give me resources to make that school better, whether you call it a voucher, school right. choice, whatever it may be, we should put money into but, it and try to make it okay. better. Before we pivot to, to a little finance stuff with Wall Street, I'm gonna ask you, pick the dream ticket from a Democratic perspective that beats Trump? I'm gonna let the voters make the choice, but I like, I think Biden on the surface of it, as we look at it today, uh, probably is the most appealing can in a get, national. Can he get through a primary? He's gonna have a, that, that, that will be his challenge. Um, I do think for Donald Trump, his biggest challenge is the, how women will react to him in 2020. And if the polling is to be believed, he's lost great ground there. So I heard someone here today say, are they going to drop Pence and put Nikki Haley on the ticket? Who knows? But Democrats would probably be smart to have a balanced that's ticket. Been, that's been uh, rumored forever and never and, happened. But I tell you, I haven't heard as much as I've heard here in oh, the really? last two days. So you've heard a lot about I've dropping heard, Pence, putting Nikki Haley on the ticket. And this is ticket. not an indictment of Pence, but this is just no, what the, what the I, talk I, is I've here. heard that too, but that's interesting it's here because sometimes that, uh, that circulates out and, it, and it, it's true. But look, I like this young mayor out of South Bend. I think he's the most what, thoughtful you, guy uh, in the race. I, I don't, I'm from the South. I, I can't I say his name. Boot, names. Booty, <laughs> I call him Mayor Pete. Mayor I think Pete. He, he's okay. very interesting. I think in terms of economic ideas, the guy who probably is not going to move judge? up the this is guy, that, Andrew Buttigieg. Buttigieg. The, the young guy, Andrew Yang, I think has some interesting yeah. ideas. Uh, but I think it's Biden, who is the, the front runner here. And I wouldn't count Elizabeth Warren out. I know whatever people's thoughts are about her politics, I do think she's speaking very truthfully and forcefully. By the way, you hear, you hear like people groan over there? <laughs> this is a Wall Street conference. I know. You just asked a question about who. I mean, four years ago, if we were talking in a, a conference full of Republicans and we talked about Donald Trump, right. there have probably been groans as well. Uh, before I let you go, I know you're a busy guy. Wall Street. You worked at Morgan Stanley. You, you know the street. What's going on? I mean, we're going to see. I think we see any consolidation out there. Do you, do, does Goldman Sachs have to go out and buy an asset management firm? I mean, that's some of the stuff I keep hearing at conferences like this. The world is changing. Regulations are forcing all institutions, particularly in the financial services space, to think differently about how they make a living, how they make a profit, how they attract talent. I think one of the things we're seeing is talent is moving around. There was a time when right. the talent was here, now the talent's moving there. Is the talent going to continue to go out west or down south? Uh, so those are questions that these big firms are going to have to answer. Uh, and as government, which I hope will not take the foot off some of the things that they're doing, I think it's important. You think Dodd-Frank was good? I think Dodd, the thrust of Dodd-Frank was smart. Now we've got to come back and reevaluate it and determine if right. it's, is it restricting or you restraining? Hear them groaning, they're groaning again back But here. is it restraining uh, the, the kind of ca capital disbursement to small businesses mm -hmm. and medium-sized businesses across the country? What well, do you address those things? They've taken the systemic uh, label off some firms that they probably should not have had in the, right, at the right. beginning. But I'd be careful. I don't think we, uh, as much as it's easy to sit around and talk about excesses, I think we can't forget the core. And we're just 12 years from that core. Well, that core, that, that, that Dodd-Frank transformed Wall Street and particularly hurt Goldman Sachs. What do you think happens there? I mean, they, are, they can't trade anymore. There are a lot of smart guys over there. I'm going uh, to let them figure that out. Okay. Good <laughs> answer. Thank you. Thanks, Harold. Thanks for having me.